Yeah, some old guy coding again today. And uh, as I mentioned in the B205 videos series that uh, maybe it hasn't come out yet or maybe it already has. If not, it'll come out soon. There's a little bit of electronics in there that I'm building. It occurred to me the other day that, uh, boy, sure, instead of doing all this wiring by hand, it sure would be nice to be able to cut some printed circuit boards on the CNC machine. So I uh, went ahead and ordered some bits and stuff, and uh, you know, we'll, make an, we'll make an attempt at it. So we're going to start things off by trying to cut out of this 3 quarter inch um, MDF um, a workspace that we can then uh, shave down to be smooth once we've got it mounted to the, uh, to the work surface here. And that'll be our surface to work on with the printed circuit boards. So this is designed that you can uh, bolt uh, four corners down and we'll surface this off and that's where we will stick our blank copper clad board. I've got some blue painters tape here. I think I'll cover up some of these holes just so that we're not sending uh, sharp parts of PC boards through. Alright, they're all four locked down. Very nice. Got them all in there. Make sure there's no space underneath any of those corners. It doesn't look like it to me. It looks like they're all flat down. So here we're running a CNC job to uh, surface this board, this work area. Cut off a mill um, in depth, which turned out to be way more than necessary. I probably could have gotten by with half or even a quarter of that. Um, I'm using a quarter inch bit with four flutes and running it fairly quickly, although this is time-lapse and with a 50% overlap. There is a slight striation uh, between each pass. Probably means that my uh, uh, CNC machine isn't perfectly perpendicular to the board. But I think it'll be good enough to get by. I figured it might be a good idea to have a laser pattern on there so that we can line up the copper clad boards to find our appropriate spot for doing the pattern. So I've got a laser pattern loaded in here. It's overly complicated, but it's kind of fun. Who knows, we might not even use the pattern for actually locating on here. But certainly the uh, horizontal and vertical lines will be helpful to get the board lined up in, in the proper orientation. Uh, as Some stuff came in the mail today. A pack of 10 single-sided PCB boards. So there's the copper clad side and I flipped it over and I thought, oh, it's double-sided. No, it's just uh, similar in color, but not quite. And these guys here look to be like little uh, one millimeter mills. They've got a rough surface, and they've got a fairly flat tip. You can see that rough surface here. It's not really a flutes like you'd expect. All right, and here's the last package that came today. Some more little drill bits, but these are uh, V-bit engraving bits with a uh, 0.1 millimeter tip. People use these to do some isolation routing, which is basically what I'm planning to be doing. Uh, but I was planning to use the one mil bit, so we'll see how that works out. I have this as a fallback plan if uh, the other one doesn't work out. The reason I'd like to use the, the milling bits is that then I can uh, drill the holes and uh, uh, cut out the board with the same bit without having to go back and change bits. So here I've got some carpet tape laying around. Some people, uh, uh, I've done some reading over the last couple of days, say don't use carpet tape because it leaves um, sticky messes on the bottom but I really don't have much more for uh, adhesive double-sided tape it's as thin as this I think we're just going to give it a try so I've got the copper stuck down here on the uh, work area that's been flattened with some double-sided uh, carpet tape and picked up this uh, rubber roller here a while back to to do something. I can't remember what it was. Something to do with the project here. So we'll use this to 
help push that down to make sure that it's attached. Alrighty, I made some changes to the uh, program. I adjusted some of the lines that were cutting a little close together and I've uh, set it to go uh, a half a mil each uh, cut on the z-axis and I sped up the z-axis a little more and I sped up the other axis just slightly. So let's see what happens. Oh, it just kind of pops up, doesn't it? You might be able to see that on the top uh, right half. We didn't quite make it through the material. We need to cut a little deeper on that outside edge yet. But there's holding tabs in there. And a little white thing on the bottom is a piece of carpet tape yet. The holes uh, seem like they're the same sort of a deal. I need to cut them a little bit deeper. It looks like we got through on the left, but we didn't quite get through on the right. So we need to cut those a little deeper. The paths, um, this is how it came out straight out of the machine. We'll go ahead and uh, run a little 220 sandpaper across that. I mean, well other than not cutting quite deep enough in some spots it, it looks pretty darn good to me. All the foils are there where they need to be. There some are a little bit small but uh, it's, uh, it's what we needed. So I'm going to use, uh, being this is the prototype, I'm going to use red LEDs on this one just uh, to save the white ones for the uh, final product. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. The LEDs are going to go in from the other side. The um, jumpers here are going to come in from the back. So being we don't have to form the legs, presumably this is uh, spaced correctly, which we're going to find out shortly. But uh, if it is, which it should be, um, we don't have to use the little spacer to bend the legs uh, into position. So we can put these guys flush on the, on the circuit board. And those all seem to work properly then. Very cool. <laughs> 